it's Mark, not in the minivan. <laughs> I am in the, uh, the our, we have an Audi too, uh, Emily's Audi. And usually I drive the minivan, which is falling apart. And, and then we have this real nice high-end Audi. So welcome to the Audi. No pearl. Heavy Montreal shirt. I, I'm trying to decide if we're going to get up to Heavy Montreal. And a big uh, factor in that will be if the Heavy Montreal people are going to pay for me to come up. Um, and when I say pay, I just mean pay for my air, airlines and hook us up with a hotel room, which is what they usually do. So I got Maiden on Friday night, the night before Heavy Montreal in Brooklyn. So it's all a little complicated, but hopefully everything will come together. But today I am here to review the new album that I am loving, Sweet Oblivion, with, uh, with Jeff featuring Jeff Tate. Jeff Tate is back, guys. I love this record, man. Fantastic. It's so, so good. I mean, the songs range from good to awesome, in my opinion. I mean, if you want to get a sample, go listen to the title track, Sweet Oblivion, on the Sweet Oblivion record by Sweet Oblivion. Um, yeah, it is bringing Jeff Tate back to where I really think he needs to be, and he hasn't been for quite quite some time and I'm not one of those haters that thinks that oh everything Jeff Tate's done uh you know post Queensryche has 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 not been good I I've enjoyed some of the stuff he's put out however this ex exceeds is that the word yeah everything um this exceeds everything that he's done for the past decade possibly two decades i'm dead serious it is really really great stuff so my question was was this like an art of anarchy thing that was the band right where where they had like scott stapp and and uh whalen uh scott whalen like art of anarchy did this album with scott whalen that i thought was really good and then whalen like stopped promoting it and was like bad mouthing it and it turned out that they had hired Wellen for a hundred grand to do the record and it was actually a really good record which I think got hurt by all the the negativity that was going back and forth so is this something like that like the sweet oblivion band uh, or whatever it is project they just hired Jeff to do um the album and they wrote everything for him and he just came in and sang well, that's a question I don't I don't know the answer to. And I listened to Mitch LaFon's podcast with with Jeff Tate recently, and he, Mitch, being the good journalist that he is, he specifically asked Jeff that question: like, what was your involvement? Did you write with it? Where was it? Did you just come in and sing the parts? And as uh, you know, I only listened to the interview once, but as 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 far as I can tell. Jeff doesn't really answer that question during the interview. Mitch, again, does a great job asking the right questions, but I don't think Jeff ever truly answers. Did he write? Did he contribute? What was his artistic input besides his great voice on this record? I don't know that it matters, really. It kind of matters just because I'm curious. And then so I bought the CD because I was listening to it on Amazon Music digitally streaming it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy the CD, A, because I want to support, and B, because I want to see who wrote the songs. Well, guess what? There's no songwriting credit on here. I, I don't know, man. There's this guy, uh, Simon uh, Mur Mularoni, who produced it and seems to be heavily involved. Um, and I think he's, he's one of the uh, musicians on it, too. But I, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird. Like, why... I can't think of any record where they don't list who wrote the songs, but yeah, so it's almost like they don't want you to know who wrote the songs. And that goes back to Mitch's interview with Jeff Tate, too, where he doesn't really answer who wrote the songs. But again, in the end, maybe it doesn't matter, because what we have here is Jeff singing really, really well. And sure, is he hitting the octave ranges that he hit with warning and and the the, the Queensryche EP you know 35 40 whatever that was a, a hell of a long time ago 35 years ago no he's not but he is really stretching his vocal ability and sounding just great and even the songs that aren't awesome on it because like some of the songs are awesome some of them are, are just I would say just good but when you hear that voice 
And there's certain things about certain singers like Jeff Tate. Bono's the same way, man. And I know some of you metal guys don't like Bono, but Bono to me, he sings over anything and it makes the song magic. Even if the song truly isn't magic, <laughs> you know? There's some people that just have these magic voices. Jeff Buckley, Bono, Jeff Tate. I put him right up there, man. I really do. I really do. And, and he gets pigeonholed as, oh, the hard rock guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he has a beautiful voice and it is shining here over hard rock and heavy metal music. And what a combination his voice makes with straight ahead hard rock, progressive metal. Uh, he is back, Sweet Oblivion, whether he <clears throat> just sang the parts or whether he was creatively involved in creating the songs, we may never know. Uh, maybe you know. Leave, it, leave, me, leave me a message in the comments. But here's the bottom line. Sweet Oblivion featuring Jeff Tate. The album is very, very, very good. One of my favorite albums of the year. I don't buy a lot of CDs. I bought, uh, I bought recently I bought Fight Like the Band by Ron Keel. Wanted to support my friend Ron Keel, who coincidentally turned me on to Sweet Oblivion with Jeff Tate. He's the first person to recommend it to me. And this is a great record, too, by the way. Uh, Ron Keel, Fight Like a Band. Um, but yeah, but we're here talking about Sweet Oblivion today. Dude, I give it 9 out of 10 stars. I really do. It's that good. It's that good. And I am really enjoying Jeff singing over this style of music again. Maybe a little too much keyboards. Like, I, I, I'm a guitar guy. I don't love keyboards. Sorry, guys. Um, there, and there is some keyboards in here. I'd rather hear an extended guitar solo than a guitar solo, keyboard solo, and another guitar solo. I, I'm just not a keyboard fanatic. Uh, but it's, it's minimal, the keyboard. You know, it's still traditional hard rock and heavy metal. It's great stuff. Sweet Oblivion. Go support it today. Let's all send a message to Jeff Tate that we like him doing this style of music. And one thing he did say on, on the Mitch LaFon podcast is when I think Mitch asked him if would there ever be another Sweet Oblivion record. And he seemed to say he seemed to be open to that. And he seemed to say never say never. And although they didn't spend a lot of time in Mitch's interview talking about Sweet Oblivion, uh, what Jeff does say about it, he sounded very positive, very positive about it. Because I've seen some speculation online, like, oh, you know, I think Chris Aiken said a comment online. I bet Jeff doesn't eat, poo poos this off and and doesn't even uh, you know want to talk about. It. Or I forget what Chris said, but and I could actually see Chris's point. But I was I was pleasantly surprised to hear him talk very positively about it in uh, Mitch Lafon's interview, which you all should listen to. Rock Talk with Mitch Lafon. I think it's like two or three episodes ago, the Jeff Tate interview. I just listened to it today. Great stuff. But go buy Sweet Oblivion featuring Jeff Tate. It is an excellent record.